If your name ain't Kakaru Manabe, then I don't wanna talk. Yo, what is up, everybody? I am Mommy Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel if you're new here, or welcome back to my channel, Mother Freaker. Yes, hello, these are very, very late, but you know what? I'm a lazy piece of shit. We've been new, sis. And these types of videos are very tedious and very painful to do, so I'm sorry my lazy ass couldn't get these out faster. But here we are, a long awaited video of Fruits Basket Season 2 episode one where we get into new territory going past where the original 2001 anime left off and yes i'm going to be referring to the english dub a lot yes i listen to the english dub all right that's it <laughs> but who else started bawling after you hear toru's little hello again i'm like oh my god my baby i love you you're back a hoe was crying in the club we are at the school and of course Mrs. Bullshit Prince Yuki fan club lady is trying to extort information from President Takai to find out if there are any girls in the student council and bitch, why are we gonna tell you? Cause we not. Look at Takai, he's like, bitch, we ain't telling you nothing. You ain't hurting my baby Yuki, not today. And usually when I do these videos, I like to have the manga in my hand and I like follow along as I watch the episode. I noticed this a bit with the first season two, how episodes kind of hop between different chapters of the manga. For season two, episode one, they hopped between chapter 42 and chapter 49 of the manga. Chapter 40 for the Motoko scenes and chapter 49 tending to Yuki and the student council. And a thing we all noticed is the color change of Motoko. And I mean, we noticed already how there is a major change in the coloring between characters. Like for Yuki, how he has freaking purple eyes and dark gray hair. And now he has the correct light gray hair and light gray eyes. And Toru, now she has both brown hair and brown eyes. And a lot of people were wondering why the change to Motoko's hair. And the creator, Natsuki Takaya, actually responded to fans about the hair color concern, saying on Twitter, it might not be well known, but Matoko's hair in the manga was always originally shade indigo, and how she is grateful that all the characters have their correct hair color according to the original manga, as she wrote that this happened because she checked and approved details as the show went on. However, some fans were still unsure because if you read the manga, Matoko's hair is like more grayscale, so people would assume her hair color is a bit lighter, and not like a dark indigo, but who the fuck cares, it's hair. I just pointed it out because I know I would have gotten comments of why I didn't mention it. And now to the moment we've all been waiting for. We follow Yuki to the counselor office wondering why we're going to the counseling office instead of the student council room. And what do we see when we open the door? A freaking tsundere tornado ricocheted through that room. And here we are now met with a never before seen, other than that little preview at the end of the last episode, a new animated character, Mate Kuragi. And of course Yuki's like, what the fuck is going on in here? And yo, when she hit her back on the desk, I was like, baby, you okay? That looked painful as fuck. And it is like three in the morning. I'm trying to contain myself. <laughs> we finally meet best boy. I've been waiting 18 years for this shit. Kakeru. Marabe. And yo, like, Aaron Dismong, I'm sorry if I said his name wrong, but like, he nailed it, my dudes. Yes, again, referring to the English dub. Kakeru in the English voice is dubbed by Aaron Dismong, and if you don't remember, he voiced Hirosoma in the 2001 Fruits Basket anime. And I mean, Lucy Christian did an amazing job voicing him in the reboot, but like, it's really cool that they brought him back, because we know they tried their utmost to bring as much of the original cast as possible, and like, Ugh, Kakadu is so bloody adorable! He's quirky, he's adorable, he's hilarious, and he's fun as fuck. And such a clashy yet complimentary character for Yuki. And we learn that Kakadu is the vice president and Machi is the class treasurer. And Yuki is anything but pleased. President Takai coming in being like, so what do you think? And Yuki's like, bro. But yo, I freaking love Kakeru so much, like, oh my gosh. When Kakeru took Yuki, President Takai is like, Nagisa from 50% off, going, why he touching my man? Where he going with my man? That was so horrible. I'm sorry for that disrespect. I'm sorry. But tell me, 
cockatoo isn't the cutest shit on the planet. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Prince Yuki fan club, I quit. You're the cat fan club, I resign. It's team cockatoo baby. And I know a lot of people thought this episode was wasted because of all the parts with Motoko in it, but keeping it real, I thought it was like almost refreshing. Through the episode, we see that she realizes that he's more talkative and he's more open than he was before. She realizes that Yuki has changed. And even though she hates Toru so much for having anything to do with him, she has to admit that he wouldn't be talking to her if it wasn't for Toru. And I feel like we got to see Matoko more humanized in this episode. And we get to see her with like actual feelings and insecurities and not just some freaking crazy mindless fangirl. And I don't know, just seeing her like tear up at herself just made me want to give her a hug. Like, baby, I know you annoying sometimes, but like, I want to hug you right now. And I'm not gonna lie, it was so heartwarming and so cute when Yuki went after and talk to her. Yuki's smile is a blessing to this entire world. Beautiful first episode. I think it was a great easing way into this emotional roller coaster I'm still not prepared for. But someone tell me if I'm wrong in this one. The ending is beautiful, by the way. If you hear like the last 10 seconds of the ending, tell me it doesn't sound like, I don't know, a certain beginning of a certain 2001 anime opening. No? Just me? Episode 2, let's go. We start this episode with Shiraki Sensei telling the students that career plan meeting shit with your parents are gonna happen after summer. But our beautiful trio isn't sure about what they're gonna do. Toru, however, wants to just go right into the workforce. But Uo is like, Toru, you can just get married. And I'm like, Toru would be the beautifulest bride. And then Uo talked about a guy she met at work. No spoilers, but if you already caught up with the sub, we been new. And we see Yuki and Kyo just sitting there, uncertain about what their future entails. In this episode, I noticed they did switch between two different chapters as well. Chapter 52, focusing on going to Kazuma's dojo, and chapter 46, for everything else. But I freaking thought it was so adorable, like Kyo taking Toru to Kazuma. It's like freaking the boy introducing his girlfriend to his dad. We enter Kazuma's dojo to shit on fire. Kazuma is burning food. Poor Toru just fell in the back. No one noticed her. Poor baby. And he burned food because he wasn't paying attention? And reading Shigari's free and dirty novels? Why is he even reading that shit? I'm kidding. I bet Shigari is a lovely novelist. My favorite part of this whole episode was when Toru was exposing Kyo. Like, Kyo cooks for me. And Kazuma's like, oh, oh, does he? Oh, does he now? Like, oh, never cooks for me. Sundere Kyo just blushing being like dad get out of here and at this moment we meet Kazuma's assistant Kunimitsu Tomoda I don't know if I'm 100% right on the top of my head but I don't remember the 2001 anime touching anything of Kyo's dad but yo if I freaking hated any character of the freaking world it's Kyo's dad I hate this man so much. But here we get to the scene where we meet Kyo's biological father. And he reveals to us that after high school graduation, the year of the cat is supposed to be locked up until the day they die. Which was touched on other episodes. I think it was the great grandfather. I don't remember on the top of my head. Don't come for me. Like Kazuma's grandpa was like in the cage, locked away from everyone. And they just stay in there until they die. And you see that Kyo's dad has such hatred towards his own son, where we also learn that Kyo's mom is dead and Kyo's father is blaming Kyo for that, calling his son a thing. That infuriated me so much. I hate this bloody man. And this justifies Kyo of in the beginning of the episode why he was so worried about his future because being in the Soma house, he might not have one. He has this preconceived plan and that he might just be locked up for the rest of his life. And, oh, it's so freaking sad. Ooh, but the dad got me so fumid saying that Kazuma only took Kyo in for the money. And Kazuma's like, no way, asshole. Like the words from Guardians of the Galaxy, he may be your father, but he ain't your daddy. When Kazuma said, he is my son, I bawled so much. Kazuma is such a good dad. And... 
Kyo just deserves the world. And then we jump to chapter 46, where I'm assuming we jump after the opening clips where they were talking about school and Tori finished work for the day. Yuki picks him up and we learn about Yuki expressing this underlying grief that because they're in the Zodiac, they might not be able to pursue the future they want. And like I said for Kyo, because they're in the Zodiac, their future might not be promised at all. Yuki goes upstairs and Toru joins Kyo in the kitchen and Toru asks Kyo if he will run Kazuma's dojo when he's older and Kyo expressing to Toru the reality of him being the year of the cat and the future he might not be able to have. You just see the fear in his eyes, especially with Akito. I just want them all to be happy and just have a good life. And now we get on to Toru about her plans for the future and if her plans are gonna change because now her mom isn't with her. And this is such a relatable episode, like people and school and like the future. Like the future is a pretty scary freaking thing, dude. And it's honestly so hard to not just sit and dwell about the future, especially if it's not promised to you or you don't have a promised path of knowing where you're gonna go but it's important to just try and just take it one step at a time you can look forward but don't look too far forward and for me this was like so different for Toru. Like, Toru is a very sweet character already, but for me, seeing her just go in on herself and in her anxieties for the future, like, baby, I just want to hold you so freaking bad and just tell her, you gonna be okay, boo, you gonna be okay. But this was such a precious moment for Toru and Kyo, like, the way he looked at her, like, bitch, I need me a freak like that, like, get me a freak that looks at me. The way Kyo looks at Toru. I need that in my life. And then thank you Shigure for ruining the moment. But spitting facts saying don't worry too much. Just stay focused on what's in front of you. If you look at this big pile of laundry, you're not gonna start it because you're gonna freak out. Just start it what's at your feet. Just start working and eventually you'll get there. So good on you, Shigure, for being the word of wisdom. But damn, Toru so precious. You'll feel better. Let's all just eat some salmon together. This episode was full of freaking feels I did not expect to freaking have to deal with. Episode 3, let's go. And here we are. Another moment we've all been waiting for. The last 2001 versus 2019 slash 2020. Feel free to argue with me about it. Episode comparison. The Ayame episode. I've been waiting so so long for my man to get his big number it's finally here first can i just say how much i miss the funny shit like okay like yeah 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 you can say it's not accurate to the manga blah 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 i get it but i miss like ritsu's wild mom like that shit was hilarious i ate that shit up when i was like 12 and i miss it and here comes ayame with his freaking flamboyant feral energy and yuki ain't having he ain't having it yo what the freak's up with the peach like is that supposed to insinuate something because i don't get it but here we are to the episode where we get to go to ayame's shop yuki is like fine i'm gonna go because i missed that they didn't say the gap but i'm trying to close this gap between me and my brother i want to try and understand this freaking crazy man. Yuki decides to go to his big brother's shop and Ayame needs to scream it to the rooftops, call Hattori and be like, listen ho, my baby brother's gonna see my freaking kink shop. But yo, like, what the freak? We missed out on Shigure's bath scene. I feel cheated. Goes and tells Kyo and Kyo be like, man, I don't fucking care. Get out of my room. And Yuki, now regretting bloody everything. And poor innocent little baby Toru, remembering how Sahari mentioning all the freaking stewardesses uniforms. I don't freaking know. Toru, you are too innocent for this world. We get to Ayame's shop and Yuki's like, you know what? I got a bad feeling about this. Let's dip. The door is open and we see Mine. Bitch, okay, I don't care what anyone has to say about the voice actors, but fudge sickle sticks. I miss Mine's old voice so bad, but it is what it is. And Yuki is just confused. What do you even sell here? And Ayame's like, let me tell you, little brother. I sell made outfit school uniforms. Blah, 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 blah. Bringing man's fantasies to life? Was it Ayame? With the freaking urge to peep on a woman in a bath? Ayame, that's illegal. And Mine just being an adorable thing as ever. And poor, poor Toru being taken 
taken hostage by Mine. Mine being like, we gon' get you fit, bitch. And what they gonna dress her in only the Lord knows. But Mine did this just to give Yuki and Ayame some alone time to chat. And hopefully melt the bond that they have between each other. But for real, she's serious though. Toru, you gon' get changed, baby. Ayame brings up the parent-teacher conference, and Ayame is very aware that Yuki isn't on the best terms with their parents. Yuki says how his parents basically sold him off for their own benefit, that all they do is control his life and maybe his future. And we see that Ayame is just as guilty, but Ayame has guilt for that and feels like he wasn't a very good brother to Yuki. But uh, the scene with Yuki and the mom, it hurts so much. Poor little Yuki clinging to his older brother with such a pleading little hand and Ayame just shoves him away. Another thing, I can't wait to see the development between Mine and Ayame's relationship. Cause, not gonna lie, those two, I love them so much. She was able to console Ayame, and Ayame says she was always there for him. And all Ayame wants to do is reconcile the relationship with his brother. And we see some similarities in them, even though personality-wise they are very different. They both have this need to create, to feel like they were needed, and like they added something into this world. I thought that was a very beautiful beautiful notion that they made. And Ayame just being such a comforting older brother. Like, Yuki, you ain't no tool, okay, baby? And right before I was gonna have my meltdown, Mine brings out the queen of the hour. Princess! Toru Honda. First of all, I love the color change. Like, not gonna lie, I wasn't feeling that yellow dress the first time. But like this white and like, I don't know, does it look pink? I don't know. But I love the color change to the dress. Like I think it's so much cuter, so much more beautiful. I think it suits Toru so much better. But like, yo, you keep be doing things in this reboot. In the original, I was all up on the Hatsuharu and Kyo train. Yuki be making me feel some things. He making me feel some type of way. I don't know what he's doing, but Yuki needs to stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> Do you hear me? Like, Yuki is being such a charmer. This scene was so freaking beautiful. It was so cute. I don't care what ship you on. You got to admit this scene's pretty damn freaking cute. And Ayame interrupting as usual. But at least if they fight, it means they acknowledging each other, right? Which I guess is an upside. But yo, can we acknowledge that phone update though? Beautiful episode. I'm living for this reboot. Do I like that I cry after almost every episode? No. Am I gonna still keep watching? Yes, the fuck I am. And this is probably gonna be very long. If you made it this far, um, thank you so much. Also, the dub is gonna be back on Funimation. They're finally able to bring back the dub and it will be up this Monday, May 18th with episode four. So yeah. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of these episodes, but let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video so I will keep doing them. I promise I will try to get these out faster. I will try to not be a lazy piece of shit. I promise you. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my weeb family. I love you very much, and I will see you next time. Bye!